Welcome everybody, this is Niklas Hoschmidt and today I would like to share a game with you guys. A game I played in the Austrian Bundesliga. I'm playing for the Götzis Chess Club and we are facing the absolute top league, top team in the league, Jenbach. And on board one I was playing against the German number one, Livio Dieter Nispiano, rated 2681. Very, very strong player. And we were playing on board one and this game I would like to show you right now. So, so far Dieter and I have played three games. The very first one was in the European Championship 2012. There he grinded me down in an end game, rook end game and I lost this one. And the last two were played last year, first in the German Championship. It was actually the last round and we drew and with that draw Livio became German champion, so he is the reigning German champion. And then we played again in the German Masters shortly after, and again it was a draw. And this time, once again, for the third time in a row, I was playing with the white pieces, and as I usually do, I start out with e4, and he replied again, like he did in our last encounter with c6, the Karakan. And in my last game against him, I played with knight c3 and knight f3, but this time I want to go for the advanced variation here going e5, bishop f5, knight f3, e6, bishop e2. This is all mainline theory, c5. Actually, black has a choice here whether he decides to prepare c5 for the future and first develops his pieces or play c5 immediately. And I think the direct approach going c5 right here is very much completely fine for black. Bishop e3, now Livio surprised me. In the past he had played c takes d4, which is the main move, but now he chose to move knight d7. I knew this move existed, but I didn't really know how to react to it. And over the board I decided to get him out of his preparation by playing the move c3 which is not the main move. The main move is to go castle and then knight e7 and c4. And I knew this would be kind of the main line, but I didn't want to see what he had prepared there specifically. So I chose c3 and from this point forward we're, we were both on our own. Knight e7 and d takes c5. This was my idea. I want to take on c5 and after knight c6 play b4. To protect the pawn on c5 and go for the structure we'll actually see in the game where black wins upon e5. Actually when I was going for this I thought I'm transposing to another line I had looked at in the past but this was not the case what I only realized afterwards. Anyway we had a completely fresh position on the board and here my opponent played bishop e7 which was a surprise to me. I thought he would take on e5. This looks very logical and I want to go knight d4 now. Black probably goes bishop g6 and I was planning to go castle. I have some idea f4, f5 maybe and it's an unbalanced position. Obviously black has the center pawns but on the other hand this pawn c5 can also be annoying for black and maybe at some point I can play c4 to get rid of my doubled c pawns. So I thought okay We'll just play the position. So Livio went bishop e7. And now I go knight d4 anyway. And this kind of posed a problem to black because black would like to keep his light squared bishop. But he would also like to take back a pawn. If he plays bishop g6 now, I can just go f4, protect a pawn on e5, and I'm a pawn up. Black has no way to win the pawn back right now. So this is no good. In the game, Livio chose to take on b1. Uh, sorry, he chose to, to take on e5. But I was expecting him to take on b1. To take on b1 and then take on e5. But obviously already this is a inferior position compared to when black doesn't just give up his light squared bishop. So here, just castle, castle and maybe f4 and I can 
put the bishop on f3, yeah, I still have this option to go c4 in the future. I think this is more comfortable for white. But here once again, my opponent surprised me, he took an e5 and I thought, okay, this must be fairly good for me because I'm taking the bishop and I'm also, um, of course, weakening the black pawn structure. Pawns on d5 and f5, now black has the double pawns on the f file, the pawn on d5 is isolated, it means it cannot be protected by other pawns and it has to be protected by pieces. So it's pretty happy here. Now I chose to play knight a3. This looks a little bit awkward, right? Why, why put the knight on the rim? Well, if I develop my knight naturally, go to d2, then he has the option to go d4. c takes d4, knight takes d4, and this is something I didn't want to allow him. Some, suddenly his knights are very well placed in the center. So I decided to play knight a3, and I have the option to go to c2 or to go to b5. Castle, castle, now knight g6. And here I play queen d2, <laughs> supposedly stopping f4, which I thought was his intention, but then he played it anyway. So maybe I should just go knight c2 here. Maybe this was more precise, actually. Knight c2, and if f4, I, I just put the bishop on d4. And then, okay, I can go bishop f3. Rook e1, and we'll see. I mean, the only problem is here, I have two pieces which would like to be on the same square, right? The knight and the, the bishop, both are very good pieces on the square d4, so obviously I cannot have both. And, well, one piece is rather misplaced, the knight on c2. But still, I think white is doing quite fine here. So queen d2, f4, nevertheless. And now I play bishop d4. I thought if I take on f4, which was my original plan, that d4 would be quite annoying because black is threatening to take on c3. And if I go bishop g3, he just still takes and he has bishop f6, winning an exchange. So what to do? I could take, but then black takes off the queen, hits f4 and b4, and also didn't like this too much. Note that I cannot take on d4 because suddenly both bishops are hanging and I will lose a piece. So I didn't like this d4 move very much because I thought black is equalizing there. So I played bishop d4 and now bishop g5, bishop f3. I had to stop obviously black from going f3 himself. This was the idea of bishop to g5. So I go bishop f3, now knight h4, and I cannot allow black to take on f3 and weaken my pawn structure and flank my king, so I need to protect this bishop of my queen. Play queen d3, so I can take back with the queen on f3. Now bishop f6, he wants to exchange the bishop. And, okay, I can win a pawn here, but I thought this is just nuts. If I take on d5, he plays rook a d8, and he has his knight in position, he has some queen g5 idea. The computer says this is possible, but over the board I didn't want to do this. And I think knight c2 is very sensible. And now my opponent went for bishop takes d4. And I think this is helping me, because my structure is getting repaired. I'm getting rid of the doubled c pawns. So maybe here's something else instead. But still, it still feels like position is, is better for, for white. Bishop takes, pawn takes, and now a5. b5, and knight b4. I have to take, and a takes b4, and rook a3 looks like an unpleasant threat, but it's my turn and I can stop it. Here it took some time to <laughs> decide whether to play a3 or a4. At first, it looks like there's no difference. And um, after he took on a3, there was no difference. But if I go a3, he has to move rook a4, which I didn't like. I can still do this, bishop d1 now, rook takes a3. But now my bishop is a little bit misplaced on d1. And black has time to attack the pawn on d4, and I didn't like this. So 
I decided to go for a4 and black just cannot allow me to have those three pawns against the single pawn on b7 it will be just too much the white pawns will march forward and black probably cannot stop them eventually so he took on a3 rook takes rook takes queen takes and he was quite happy because well i have far advanced pawns here I have the better pawn structure now actually now it's me who has the better pawn structure because black has the doubled f pawns and obviously this is also a weakness black has to defend but especially these two pawns make me quite happy here because i'm ready to support him and create a very dangerous pass pawn so he played rook e8 here i went queen b3 which i think is fine I want him to take on f3, which he has to know because otherwise I can just win the pawn on d5 as black cannot defend it again. So he took on f3, queen takes, and now I kind of missed his next move, which is why I went for this in the first place, but it's still okay. He played queen d7. If he defends the pawn on f4, let's say with the move rook e4, then I can immediately go rook c1 and support the C pawn and this C pawn is just too strong. Even though here, black might have this move actually. So maybe I didn't do this in the smartest of ways. Let me see this again. Rook e4. What was my plan here? Ah, no, I didn't want to go rook c1. I want to go queen c3, defending the pawn, and in this way, now also supporting c6. Yeah, this makes more sense. But he plays queen d7 and obviously I don't want to take the f pawn and trade it against my b pawn because now I just don't have any advantage. So I need to protect my pawn. Queen d3. Also note that I don't want to go forward here. I was considering this but now it's getting very difficult for me to, to create a pass pawn as black can blockade, block the pawn on c5. So I went queen d3 g6 rook c1 obviously i want to go c6 now and black cannot allow this so he goes rook e6 now i played some useful moves h3 and black does the same thing king h2 h5 and here i was running out of useful moves uh, but i had to make a move obviously as you do in chess and we're also running low on time both of us so I just want to see what he's going to do next. I just played queen b3, which is more or less a passing move. And he played h4, further improving his position. Even though the pawn on h4 in some variations it can also be a weakness. But I went queen d3 back, <laughs> just another pass. See what he's up to now, queen e8. And now I played rook b1, just pretending I might have some ideas here now that the rook is... Uh, protecting the pawn that I can move my queen. Maybe I have an idea c6 followed by b6. Who knows? And obviously this is more difficult to play in time trouble for black than for white because black always has to watch out for all kinds of ideas whereas I'm pretty safe here. Nothing can happen. And here my opponent made an inaccuracy I think. Or probably after this move his position gets pretty difficult. He played queen b8. He probably should just wait, queen d7, and it's not so clear how I will break through. For example, if I go c6, if I decide to sacrifice a pawn like this, then b6, okay. I threaten b7, but black goes queen b7, and I wasn't convinced that this is too much. It felt like this is not enough here for me to play. I don't know, queen b3 with the idea rook a1, rook a7, but it just feels very slow, very slow. Maybe rook e2 and black also gets some counterplay, let's say like this. And plays queen b8 and my king. There are ideas definitely for, for black and this can go sour also pretty quickly. So after queen d7, maybe I would have moved my queen, but if I could play queen f3 now, then he can go rook e4. Okay, I can go queen c3 back, rook e6. But it is, <laughs> it's not really clear how I will make progress in the end. Maybe 
The problem is, whenever I play something like Queen A5 or something in this direction, I leave my king alone and this opens up possibilities like F3 or Rook E2 and Black is very fast with his counterplay. So, after Queen D7, White is better, but it's not clear if there's any way through. Queen B8. Obviously, Black is intending to go f3. So I go Queen f3, stopping f3 check and hitting the pawn on d5, which Black cannot give me at all costs because then I just have too many pawns here. So Rook e4, very natural. And now I go Rook c1. And now you see that Black is not in time to go back to his original plan of stopping the pawn uh, by having the set of Rook e6 and Queen d7. So I will push c6 next move. And here we were getting very long time. And he played rook takes d4. And I'd seen this move coming, obviously. This was his idea of rook e4. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what to do here. And I didn't want to draw. <laughs> but actually, the way that I thought was supposedly a draw was the way to play. Anyways, here I was sitting with my clock ticking down. And I had to make a decision. And I felt, okay, let's, let's go all in and see where it goes. And I knew at this point it might be in my backfire. So we'll see. I played the move queen c3, but c6 is very good, very good try. What we both missed initially, he saw it, but I didn't see it during the game, is that after b takes, b takes, okay, c7, Black cannot allow or also queen c3 is a threat. So rook c4 was the move we both were thinking. Rook takes, pawn takes. And now if black has enough time, he would obviously stop this pawn. So queen c3 checks looks very logical. King g8 and queen takes c4. And I thought now black makes a draw of f3 check. Because if I go g3, well g3 would be terrible because black even plays queen b2 and checkmates me. And if I go back, then black has a perpetual. But what is obvious now, if you look at the position, is that after f3 check, I can go c7 and block the pawn this way. And once my pawn has reached c7, I will just queen here. I'll just go... How do I do this, actually? This should be winning in some way. Queen c5 looks smart, so you cannot go king f8, and then I'll go king queen d6, queen d8 game over. So this was good but black can actually still defend here with queen c7 because his king can come close but still feels like to me that this would be <laughs> very dangerous to say the least. Very dangerous but maybe black is just in time to get his king closer uh, to the c-pawn and, and somehow draw but this was the best try. Anyway I didn't see this c7 check move and I played queen c3 and now it gets very sharp and we're having no time for former moves. f3 check has to be played. If he goes queen e5, I can just go f3 and black's in this pin with all his pieces and uh, I'll go c6 next and he can resign. So he has to go f3 check. Now I play king h1 which looks like such a weird move, right? Allowing black to take on g2 with check but black shouldn't take on g2 because then Mm. f takes g2 yeah here can just take and after queen e5 plays c6 yeah and once again i'm winning the difference is that after queen e5 immediately now black has a very strong threat it's the move rook d1 check so if i go c6 takes takes rook d1 check rook takes queen takes c3 is winning for black obviously so I need to address this threat. And I played Queen A1. <laughs> this was the move I had prepared. And well, it's it's a pretty bold try, let's put it like this. Because I'm leaving my king alone. <laughs> and here he played King H7, which I was kind of relieved to see. Well, I thought he can just go, for example, f takes g2, um, king g1, and rook e4. It's just very simple if he wants to draw, at least. At least. I mean, this rook and game, um, 
I'm not playing for a win, but I should. I think I should be able to draw. Yeah, I should be able to draw somehow. So this was one option, obviously, just, just take on g2. But he goes king h7, now c6. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and this is the 40th move. So I've made the 40th move, but he hasn't. He has to play one more move. And here actually black's winning. He is winning, but it's not that easy to see with little time on the clock. And he played queen g5, which is a mistake. He wins by taking on g2. Actually, I'd kind of seen this line, but I thought, okay, with my pawn on c6, I can still make something happen here. I want to go king g1, but now the pawn is black and go queen f5. That's very strong because of the queen takes d4, queen takes h3. It's game over. You can just. Yeah, f3, check, picks up the rook and picks up the pawn, and he's up a few pawns. Two pawns, so this game over. So to play a move like rook c3 or something like this, but black just continues his attack and his attack is too strong here. Rook f4 and the attack is too strong. Why is it too strong? Let's see if we can figure this out. Didn't look too far here. Queen b2. Okay, there's also this move d4 in the position. Yeah, actually, I quite like d4. Yeah, it's just too much. The rook has to keep this pawn protected, and I'm I'm not <laughs> not fast enough with the counterplay. Rook a3, and maybe even d3 here. Just doesn't work. Black's king is too safe. I would say even if I go rook a8 now, just f6. Yeah, no, this is too much. So f takes g2 wins if i go king takes g2 black can go queen g5 check and king h1 rook d3 rook c3 and queen f6 pinning the rook and it's game over so yes my king position was not the greatest here but he played queen g5 and now i took an f3 and here we made time control and we have to look at the position and we see that the rook is hanging and I have the c7 threat. So I was rather optimistic here, but I thought, okay, it should be still, there should be still something from because my king is so open, right? So here he played rook a4, which is a move I looked at before I played g takes f3. But he also has some other options. And I thought queen f4 would be a good move to protect the rook and to threaten to take on f3. And while he was thinking, I realized that my plan to go c7 here is not a good idea because of the queen takes f3 check, king g1, he has this nasty move, rook g4 check, which just wins on the spot because of the h takes g4, h3. I cannot stop queen g2 really and if I go king f1 h2 he will queen first and it will be all over. So I realized this and actually my plan was to play king g2 here which would have been a losing move because after rook d2 queen g3 check is rather unpleasant to cope with and once again my piece are on the on the queen side so just too far a way to protect my king. May I don't know, probably I would have noticed it. I mean, maybe I would have noticed it, who knows? And I uh, would have found a correct reply here, which is to go king g1, for example. That's one possible way to step out of it. Black cannot take on f3 because his rook is hanging, so he should play something like rook c4. Rook takes, takes, queen a5, queen d6. Yeah, and this should be equal, or did I butcher already for white? I mean, this is a line we looked at uh, in our post-mortem, but with the king on g2, because the same thing can happen with the king on g2. We both missed this rook d2 idea. And there, the difference was that now white was in time to play queen a7 and then to queen, but here the difference is that black queens with check, 
and then picks up the queen on c8 so that's bad news for white but yeah some somewhere here this uh, should be a draw maybe queen queen c3 no queen c3 there's queen g5 check and queen c5 it's kind of tricky because if black just picks up this pawn he has the c pawn and he's winning so okay but there should be some way here to make a draw i'm pretty certain maybe queen a7 something like this to keep an eye on the f7 pawn let's say c3 queen c5 this kind of looks sensible <laughs> okay somewhere around here should be a draw anyways he played the move rook a4 and here i would like you guys to take a moment because this is the exercise of the day for you guys what did i play now with the white pieces so pause the video right now take it as your daily chess exercise and try to figure it out all right i hope you're ready because i'm going to show you now what i did and I just left my queen on priest playing c7 and this just works out beautifully just amazing despite my king being so open this just works out so he took my queen and now he resigned because there's not much to do this pawn will queen so black obviously has moves here he can play queen f6 or queen e5 hitting my rook on a1 but I just go rook c1 and this is just one check and a queen next move. So this doesn't help for black. But obviously a critical move would be queen f5. Stopping the queen and threatening also checks. But it turns out that these checks just don't matter. Because I play rook a8. It's important to go rook a8 and not rook c1. Because then black could put his queen behind the pawn. But I go rook a8. And well... Queen takes h3, king g1, and that's it. Also, it's important here that I'm always immediately threatening checkmate. Otherwise, black would be in time to play something like h3 here. But here, I'm the one to checkmate first. So, after queen f5, the best try black has after rook a8 is to go queen f3 check. Now I go king g1, queen d1 check. And black is out of checks. But he can go queen c2, c8 queen, queen e4 check. But here I can, I will eventually escape the checks. And yeah, Livio didn't feel like checking this because I'm a rook up. And eventually he will run out of checks. And it's just not enough. I even, I even calculate going to c1 so I don't give up the f2 pawn of check. And well, already now it's difficult to give a check. Yeah, queen f4 check. Um, King b2 or king b1 let's say queen b4 check king a2 and eventually the checks will run out for example here now i'm ready to play after queen d3 bring my queen closer to the king of queen d1 queen c2 and i'm a rook up against two pawns and black also has no way to pick up this rook by giving a check so there's just no hope for black so this was lucky for me that um, my opponent blundered in this way and it's just kind of magical how it all perfectly works out for white and I was very happy obviously to to beat the the strongest German player the Vudita Nispiano and from the the course of the game the the result is kind of okay but um, okay the time trouble uh, <laughs> could have also led to a very different result, obviously, as I was losing, like I pointed out. And it's funny, I, I just took this gamble uh, going into this line, even though I kind of felt that my king might be too weak, but I just didn't want to play another draw against him. And also, I hadn't, up to this point, won a game in the Austrian Bundesliga. And this was already the ninth round. So... I was very desperate to win a game, I guess. 
And I took the gamble and fortunately for me it worked out as my opponent played two mistakes on the 40th move here he was winning and then after rook a4 he's losing. Alright so that's the game I want to share with you guys. Let me know in the comments if you were able to find the winning sequence with c7 and I hope you enjoyed the analysis. If you have any questions just let me know in the comments and I'll get to them and then I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye. Have a good day.